there folks, welcome to Kingston Park and welcome to a magic edition of the big preview. This the show for all Thunder fans dedicated to everything Newcastle Thunder. All of the chat, all of the build up, all of the news to the latest weekend Betfred Championship fixture. But this weekend it's not just any fixture. For the first time in a few years it's the return of magic weekend to Newcastle and we're kicking it all off on Friday night against the York City Knights. This is everything you need ahead of Friday Night Lights and this is what's coming up on today's Big Preview. We take a look back at our latest championship outing, a thumping win at Dewsbury Rams. It's been a stunning year for our academy with no less than three making first team debuts. We'll catch up with one of our graduates who've made an impact. We'll provide you with everything you need to know about this weekend's opponents. And as well as taking a look at the injury situation, Jack Johnson stops by to preview the Friday night game. Lots to get through then, but we start as ever with a look back at the weekend action. We travelled all the way to Yorkshire knowing full well a win over the Dewsbury Rams would guarantee us championship safety for a second consecutive season. And how the boys delivered. Incredible effort from the boys there then to guarantee our second tier status for yet another season. Championship Rugby League returning to Kingston Park next year. But all of that is for next year. There's still the rest of this season to play out yet. And what a season it's been. Not just on the pitch, but also in terms of our academy graduates. Three making their debuts for the first team. One of which was Jake Anderson. And I caught up with him just last week. What's this season been like for you breaking into the first team in the manner that you have? It's been great. Um, obviously it's just that stepping stone. Um, I was lucky to make, make my debut um, against Featherson and I, I kind of seen it as a one-off, you know, make, make my debut but then obviously got asked, asked to play again and I got asked to play again and I, kinda, <laughs> I just got, I got a good energy, I got like, I started to feel a bit like better about myself, yeah. you know, having that 
confidence, but it's been, it's been an honour to, to get that yeah. get that chance um, and to be trusted in a way to, to do my job as part of that team. Yeah. But it's been really good. How hard has it been though to come from the academy setup, which is you know elite at the end of a the day these days, but then to break into the first team, be playing up against the likes of you know Bradford Bulls, etc. What's that been like? How difficult has it been? Obviously, you've got that step, mm. and it's quite a big step physicality-wise, and just the, the the speed of the game. It's quite a big step, but I mean, you, you look at our team, and I've I've got good lads around us. Yeah. Um. I've. I mean, I've had Akuma helping us a lot. Um. You know, just making sure I'm all right, mm. making sure I'm nice and calm and confident about everything that I need to do. So I've yeah. got a good. I've got a good group of lads around us helping us on match days, or training, helping us afterwards. Or, yeah anything I need. Yeah, you, you talk about Akuma and you lead me perfectly on to my next question. I was going to talk about the first team lads and say who has been helped. Obviously Akuma has been there with the vast experience he's had at Super League. I presume Bob and the likes yeah. as well. How have they helped you? Just giving us little little tips or just help us mm. of um, things I need to do in my position or in general to just improve my game. And I mean, we could stay after training for 10, 15 minutes and it just helps. Yeah. Giving us that them little bits of information helps massively. Have they helped you away from the pitch as well, like in terms of you know adjusting to that kind of hybrid structure that we now have here at Thunder? Yeah, it's been, it's been good. They've really helped us uh, settle in once um, going from the under 19s training to first team. Mm. It's helped, it, especially the first couple of weeks. They just made made it a bit easier, a bit more calm for us. But all all the lads have been the same. Helped yeah. us helped us massively settle in. That's the players. What about the coaching staff? Because I know obviously you work with EP and Mick within the academy, but then you make a step up. You've got Freddie, you've got Dennis Betts. Everyone knows about Dennis's yeah. history in the game, especially. What's it been like to be working underneath them? Amazing. Like I say, it's, a, it's an honour to work under them mm. as well. Um, and they've helped loads. Again, just making sure I'm nice, nice and chill. Um, always, always been there if I need any support. Um, which has been which has been great because if I ever have any questions, I know I can go speak to them. Yeah. And um, whether that's about specifically rugby or anything else, yeah. I know both of them are always there. We talk about Mick, Heapy, etc. We've seen the development of the Thunder Academy over the years. Now that elite status, why has it been able to produce stars like yourself, like Alex as well, who have come through so quickly and made that transition to first team? Um, I'm not too sure about all the others, but I know I know for myself, I like to prove a point. Mm. Um, so whether that's because yeah we're not a, a super league yeah super league side, I like to prove um, everyone say you know what just because we're not a super league club doesn't mean we can't produce super league players. Mm. Um, so I think having having that confidence in and all the lads coming through of we are we are decent we yeah. can we can come through and progress and progress and go further. So I think that's what I know has helped me. Mm to slowly, slowly get to where I am at the moment. And I suppose once one breaks through, it's almost like a dam breaking, isn't it? More and more. How much extra confidence does that give? You've just stepped off a training pitch with the academy lads. Does it add to the buzz? Does it add to the confidence that more and more think, you know what, hang on, Alex has done it, you know, Kieran's done it, now Jake's done it as well, etc., etc. We can do it as well. I'd like to think so. I'd like to think, because um, I know definitely when, when Alex was playing, and obviously I was still in the 19s, I was like, I'd like to be in that spot. Yeah. I'd like to be the one um, making my debut and fortunately I've been able to do that. So I'd like to think there's a couple of the lads thinking, you know what, maybe maybe I can um, and give them that confidence. But definitely, I, I, I'd like to think so and I, I hope that is the case. Great to catch up with Jake there then and uh, already looking forward to next season to seeing how many more academy graduates turn out for the first team. On to this weekend then, and on to York City Knights. Although this isn't just the next game, this is all about Magic Weekend returning to Newcastle and us kicking it off right here at Kingston Park on Friday nights. Of course, it's been three years since we've seen the Rugby League showpiece right here in the Northeast. And if you needed any more hype, well, take a look at this.
Magic Weekend is back, one of the biggest and best sporting occasions to hit the North East and it all starts right here at Kingston Park on Friday night. Newcastle Thunder against the York City Knights. If you haven't already got your tickets, what on earth are you playing at? Get them, they will be available on our website. But if you don't know too much about this weekend's opponents, the York City Knights allow us to provide you with all of that information. This is In Opposition. So that's everything you need to know about York ahead of Friday Night Lights. So it's about time we focused on ourselves. And I'm joined right now by a bloke who's, well, hopefully going to help me do exactly that. Jack Johnson, fresh from his hat trick at the weekend. Jack, before we get into that, how are you and the boys feeling? Championship survival this season at the very first attempt? Yeah, I um, know oh it was a big one for us all. I think um, we should have probably cemented this a while ago I think we've, we've had a lot of chances that we've sort of thrown away so I think it was good for everyone and there's a bit of a weight been lifted on off everyone's shoulders definitely. We didn't even know about the fact that we'd be in the championship until yeah. mid-December then everything with Covid and all of the complications yeah. that that brings. Do all of those things together make this achievement that extra bit special? Oh yeah I think obviously it was a bit of a it wasn't. A, it was a sort of bit of a shock. There was a bit of rumours, but we, yeah. um, no one knew where we were going to be. I think a lot of us signed um, whilst we were in League One, so then it was a matter of getting a few more extra bodies in, and then obviously we, we didn't have the. It was a bit of an up and down pre-season with being in and in and out. So I think yeah, it's a. I think we've come through it quite well, to be honest, and. Yeah, we've made the most of it, definitely. I suppose all of the struggles and all of the, the kind of a distance that Thunder have gone and the improvements that have made were, were highlighted in that game against Dewsbury. You just reflect back on that win for us. Oh, yeah, I think um, we, we've put together a, a decent performance. There. I think in the past, sort of when we've gone behind, we've not necessarily got, like, not had the best game. And yeah. it's, we've, but I think we turned the corner a bit there. We, we were good at the start and then we just we battled through it and maybe if weeks gone by we might have lost a game like that because um, there can be a tricky opponent so I think we're all proud of, of what we've done there and we've got through it. We can't talk about the game and, and not talk about your hat-trick of course, <laughs> you know wingers are there to score tries, you've got yeah, enough yeah. of them this season. First hat-trick of the season, you, you must yeah. be absolutely chuffed with that. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm made up with that, that's what, especially as a winger, that's yeah. what you, you enjoy doing. You the role of a winger now you end up doing a lot of the the stuff that the bigger boys do like you so I think when you do finally get a few tries it makes it all seem a bit more worthwhile definitely yeah I can uh, I can almost hear the the kind of the competition there a little bit the wingers are having to come in and do what the forwards <laughs> yeah, are doing etc no, no, no. no I think the modern role as opposed to doing that for always work I think Jay and Ted though I think I've, I've helped them out a bit this season so <laughs> <laughs> well I can't wait to see one of the twins uh, dive over in the corner yeah. and produce an acrobatic finish well, then they've actually um, they reckon they, are, they could they've got the skill set to be um, more of a fullback, I think it was Jay with his chip over the top against. I uh -huh. can't remember who that was against, but he's not stopped going on about it. If you want to pull that up, then we can have a, have a look at that one. Typical, typical of them. Um, your try scoring abilities are obviously, you know, right up at the top of the charts. Not quite, one behind Gilly. Yeah. I imagine there's a bit of healthy competition going on there. Yeah, well, he actually, obviously, he provided uh, two of my tries on yeah. the plate for me, which um, for him, I think he, I thought he'd have just been going for the. Uh, <laughs> the lead himself but no it's it's good like we we obviously 
the competition's great, so it's, yeah, it's good. Yeah, uh, is there any, like, little private bet going on there no. to see who's going to finish top or no, not? No, no, nothing. We'll just, uh, I don't think we're in a position at that point. I think it was the matter of <laughs> whoever scored and we were, we were happy with. So maybe a bit more of a competition now as the uh, season draws to a close. Yeah. Definitely. Well, it's good that at least one has got over anyway. Let's look ahead to this weekend because obviously Magic is back in Newcastle the yeah, first yeah. time in a few years. You've already had experience of playing yeah, yeah. at St James's Park. What was that like when you were at Widnes? Oh, yeah, that was that was brilliant. That was my first game at Widnes. Um, and it was, yeah, just a bit of a bit of an unreal sort of experience. Like the, the stadium itself and the, the occasion, it were really good. Mm. Especially from not expecting it was only a, a week, week or two before I went on loan there. So yeah, that was brilliant. And I look, I'd want to sort of go and do that type of thing again, definitely. We're a bit biased up here, obviously, but yeah. we've seen Magic Weekend at the Etihad. It's yeah. been up in Edinburgh. It's been Anfield most recently yeah. as well. But Newcastle's quite clearly yeah. the dominant and the best version for it. Why would you say that? Uh, I don't. I think the with it being sort of the city itself is just and the location of it. Obviously, mm. it's right in the right in the centre. You can go in and out. I think the fans. Well, everyone you speak to, they just seem to love it and always sort yeah. of come back and I think that must have something to do with it just the location and the people as well and I think in, just in general it's a, it's a great occasion and I'm glad it's back. So with it being you know such a great occasion yeah. how much extra does it mean to be kicking it all off on, on Friday night here at Kingston Park? Oh, yeah no it is it's really good help it'd be good if obviously people came to see it and I think I think it was last year it was meant to actually be the, the curtain raiser yeah. at St James's which would have obviously that would have been brilliant, especially for a lot of the, the local lads and a lot of the fans as well, who mm. obviously, I'm guessing they both they support uh, Newcastle as well. So that would have been even more special. But obviously, we're, with where we're at and the current times, so we'll just have to make do. But I think that'll be, it'll still be good and we're looking forward to it, yeah. We'll come on to York in a second, but are you going to get yourself down to St James's across the course of the weekend or not? Uh, yeah, maybe. I mean, Jordan stole all the, uh, the tickets, so <laughs> if I can... S Prize one off in then maybe but um, yeah we'll hopefully get down there yeah. that's the biggest if i've ever heard on the big preview that definitely uh jordan if you are uh, watching this you know what to do tickets for everyone all around um just on york obviously jack we, we beat them earlier on the season yeah, yeah. it's a cracking cracking game at their place it's one of those where they're going to be looking at it thinking big occasion magic weekend yeah. they're going to be bang up for it aren't they yeah yeah i think they'll um They'll probably want to get one sort of back over on us, and I, I think they've they've had a few good results since. Mm. Um, so yeah, it'll be a it'll be a tough game, but it's one of them now. We're we're sort of all near that um, that eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh. It's called it's quite close really. So I think everyone will just be wanting to get a few last wins in now and get get up. Um, up the league. You mentioned it before, but we reckon there's going to be quite a big crowd yeah. in here Friday night lights right. type of atmosphere. How much can you and the boys use that atmosphere to your advantage on Friday? Yeah, definitely. I think obviously whenever you get a, a good a good home support, it's it helps everyone, and it's um, you want to put on a bit bit more of a show for them. So hopefully we can get a few in and um, get the win as well. Hopefully so. Top man, thanks very much, fella, for stopping by. We'll let you get to uh, training and back to that try score and uh, battle with Gilly and maybe trying to prize a few tickets off Jordan <laughs> yeah. as well. For us, we're going to find out who's going to be fit for the Friday night encounter. Friday night lights against York City Knights. All a kickoff magic weekend. You know exactly what that means. We have to stop by for the treatment table with Gareth O'Loughlin. <laughs> Hi, my name's Gareth Lockett and welcome to the treatment table. So just a quick update on injuries this week. Obviously you saw on the weekend Sam Wild went down with a, an injury. Um, he's got a sustained a Achilles injury, so he's obviously started with rehab and we'll see how he's going this week. Well that's it guys, no other injuries. I've been Gareth Lockett and that's been this week's treatment table. So that's the treatment table and that is that for another episode of the big preview. Many thanks to all of the guests this week, to Gareth O'Loughlin, Jake Anderson and of course to Jack Johnson. But Magic Weekend is almost upon us. 
Friday night it all kicks off right here at Kingston Park. Newcastle Thunder against the York City Knights for Friday Night Lights. We'll see you all down here, but in the meantime, take care. Bye for now.